So you're in the market for a new six seater. You've looked at cars, but there's just not enough storage. Combi vans are probably what you're going to be looking at next. In this video, we're going to be covering a transporter, a traffic and a transit. So for people that watch my channel, you'll already know that I own a transporter. So you might think I'm probably going to be heavily biased towards this thing. But in today's video, we're going to be comparing it with the traffic and the transit. And we're going to be comparing all different aspects of it from the interior, the engine, the running gear, the storage, the isofix, you name it, we're going to cover it. So the interior in this transit, first of all, you're presented with a nice leather steering wheel. You've got the multifunction steering wheel. It's very much from a car. You've got the gated leather gear stick and you've got all your controls that very much remind me of any typical Ford. If anything, it feels a little bit more like the Ford Fiesta than any other. You have a storage box above the steering wheel with a 12 volt power supply and aux in and a USB supply. You also have a storage box, which is just in front of the passenger here, which is not good for storing much more than maybe an iPad and a logbook. You have some open cubby holes, enough to store a one litre bottle in each of these holes on the end of the dashboard. You also have an open storage area just here, which doesn't appear to be useful for much. There's not much grip there. Anything you do put in there is gonna slide off. You've also got two cup holders at the end of the dashboard, in addition to that water bottle holder that I previously mentioned. And on the door, you've got two bins and they're quite big. They're quite big bins. There's a divider in the top bin so you can again get another water bottle. So there's gonna be no shortage of water in this vehicle. And the doors, I must say, are presented with this nice two-tone colour. And uh, although you might not be a fan of the colour itself, the two-toning of it is quite nice. And it is very less van-like than, for example, the Transporter that I believe has very van-esque door cards. You have a nice storage area just on the top, which looks like it would be reserved for a taco. But in this instance, being a private vehicle, it's not got anything in there. And this one even comes with a set of bird spotting shades. Now this one in particular has got a inverter installed, which means you can have a three pin socket. And this one in particular is 150 watt. Now, if you're interested in inverters, I do have other videos on those. But one thing I will say is this inverter in this vehicle will not be a pure sine wave inverter. So although it's probably gonna be fantastic for charging a laptop, it will probably be more efficient to get a 12 volt laptop charger. Also, you've got a pull down armrest just in the middle here with another two cup holders, elastic to hold paperwork and a little bit of a pen tray. On the driver's seat, you've got one armrest that comes out in the middle here and you can use your other arm on the door card. And this is where maybe it lacks. It does feel a little bit twisted and awkward here. Whereas the transporter has got two armrests on its seat. You do have some vanity mirrors just in the visor here. These are not van derived. So these are an extra that you will get on this sort of vehicle. But that is a nice thing to have. Although there's no lights installed with those mirrors. Now we are in the Renault Traffic Sport. The first thing I notice when I get inside this interior is it does feel a lot more modern than the other vans. I've still got a leather multifunction steering wheel, although the functions aren't as multiple as the Transit or the Transporter. Now, although I say that this thing does feel a lot more futuristic, it is balancing that fine line between plasticky and nice. And, and we are, there's an abundance of plastic in this vehicle. They all are van derived, so you can expect to see that sort of finish everywhere. But I just feel like this one has gone the extra plasticky mile. For storage, we have a little pull-out cubby hole just here, which is not big enough to fit a water bottle like the Transit. We have a pull-out cup holder just here, which locks out into position. And again, although it is a functional cup holder, I wouldn't want to put anything in there while I was driving because it, it is evidently going to just bounce out. We have got rubber mats in this, unlike the Transit, which does have carpets. Now, to different people, that is gonna be a good thing or a bad thing. I personally always like to have carpets in my vehicle. Even when I've got the van derived transporter, I went out of my way to make sure I had carpets in that. But again, if you're an adventurer and you do get muddy feet a lot, then the rubber mats are gonna be a plus for you. We have a 12 volt power supply on the dashboard here. There's no storage above the steering wheel like you would find in the Transit. And you've also got a very small 
glove box just here and again it's not going to be useful for storing much you could maybe get some vehicle documents in there or any or maybe a small ipad but again there's no charging points in there it seems like we are lacking a bit on charging points in the front of this cab the main glove box in this one seems to be a lot bigger than the rest it goes back quite a way and it's got a nice curved front on the glove box so if you do overfill it it should help you in squeezing that stuff in by curving it around to the top there's no center armrest in here but there is an armrest on the driver's seat which again is just on the passenger side of the driver's seat and you use the door as your armrest for your right arm as with all of these common vehicles you've got storage just underneath the passenger seats here but i feel like this traffic in particular is very difficult to access You've got a very rough on your fingers bit of tarp there just to pull up. Uh, the storage again is similar on them all. There's nothing, nothing between them as far as storage is concerned, but the ease of access is definitely more difficult on this. So now we are sat in the transporter. And first of all, the immediate thing what hits me is this interior is boring. Now, if you like the minimalistic look and you like things to be very subtle, then this is probably the interior for you. That's what I prefer personally, but definitely the other two look a bit more modern, look a bit more futuristic with the interior. This one has got clocks that look like they've been taken straight from the car range of the vehicle, so it looks exactly the same as what you'd expect in a Passat or a Golf. Storage in this vehicle is not as good as the other two. You do have very large storage bins in the doors. They are probably the biggest out of the two vehicles, but as far as pull-out compartments and top and bottom glove boxes, this is very, very limited. You have a pull-out cup holder just in the middle here that has space for two cups and space for one 12 volt charging supply. Now these cup holders, if you plan on using these, you're probably gonna be pretty upset because these break very, very easily. They're known throughout the community to break. One in this vehicle has already broken. And it's not even one of those things that is worth getting a replacement part for because even if you replace this with a factory VW standard part, it's probably going to break again. People have 3D printed replacements for these and you can probably pick them up for not much more than £10. You have one top glove box, which is big enough to store your manual, maybe a laptop and maybe an iPad on top of that. Your storage on the top of the dashboard, uh, just little recession panels where you can store stuff with grippy mats inside. But other than that, we're quite restricted for storage inside this vehicle. One thing I do like about the transporters is the ease of access for under the seat. And the way you do that is you pull the front up and it just slides forward. And then you've got this, which compared to the traffic is an absolute breeze. Again, with this option, you have the rubber floor in the front, but then someone's placed a carpet over the top of that. So it's probably the best of both worlds here. You can have a carpet for the majority of the time, and if you know you're gonna be doing something a little bit dirty, you can get your carpet out. Again, you're supplied with a vanity mirror on each of the sun visors and a storage for what would be a tackle on the top, but can't be used for much else in its absence because it's been replaced with a couple of buttons just to its left. In the transporter, you do have what we call captain chairs, and basically, two armrests, one on either side, and that keeps you nice and symmetrical while driving. These things do adjust up and down with a little roller wheel underneath, but if you did want another captain's chair in the passenger seat here, I would definitely say make sure you get one with that spec, because if you plan on fitting one afterwards, you're probably going to fall off your twin chair when you find out how much a captain's chair for a passenger is. So what is it like for your passengers in the rear? So we're back in the transit now to start with, and it's very, very upright for the passengers. There's not much lean back option on this. In fact, there's no lean back option at all, but you'd think with that being said, they'd give a bit more of a lean angle. I wouldn't like to be sat here for a prolonged period of time. Interior trim wise, it does look very much self-converted. You've got this U grommeting that goes around the cutout of the windows. You've got paint finish on the inside here, which can be expected from most of these types of vehicles, but in some of them, you can get plastic coverings for back here. You have a manual opening window. Unfortunately, this one does not slide. It just clips out and pushes open like you would expect in some of the older hatchbacks from the 90s. That being said, it probably doesn't leak like the sliding window in the transporters. We have a nice storage cage just underneath the seats here. So you can put bags under the seats and put this cage across and that stops things from sliding out in front of you. We are missing some 12 volt power supplies in the back of this vehicle. If you do have kids and you wanna go long distances in this car, then you might want to have a 12 volt supply so they can plug their iPads in, but there is none back here. Now this wouldn't be a difficult thing to retrofit in any vehicle, 
but it's something you probably expect for a vehicle what is tailored towards adventure. Unfortunately, there's no free sunglasses in the back here either. And even if you did have your sunglasses, there's not many places to store them. There's absolutely no storage other than what I've already told you under the seats. The back of the seats are completely flat. It wouldn't have taken much to put an elastic back in on this seat so you could store things, but it's just not here. Unlike the other two vans, this one is just a single slider door, which is on the left-hand side, whereas the other two have got twin sliders, one on either side, but we'll see that later on in the video. Two of the three seats in the back here have Isofix, and these are not my favorite fixing that I've come across. As a father myself, I've had experiences with Isofix, good and bad, and I wouldn't want to put seats in this. The way these work is that you just part the fabric and try and slide the Isofix through the seat, and I, when you're trying to get two Isofixers going through two different holes, it is a difficult challenge at best, and on this, there are no physical holes, you have to part each one. You are met with a nice bulkhead in here, so that will cut out any ambient noise from the rear coming forward. Things like this can be removed, so if you do decide you need to put something longer in here and the bulkhead is an issue, they can easily be removed, but it's good to have that option to keep this main cab area that little bit more quiet. Although these seats are very, very uncomfortable, they do have quite nice dividers. So if you have kids that argue about space, these dividers will keep them well in their place and it's evident whose space is who, rather than just having a flat bench going through the back. So that might save a few arguments on those long drives. The sliding door is very easy to operate on a transit. It has got that van sound, but it's very easy to move, unlike my transporter, which sometimes is a bit of a nightmare. So just like the front of this Renault traffic, the theme of being better continues in the rear. The seats are three-way split seats. There's an evident divide line, and in between each seat, there's a nice pull-out armrest. There seems to be a lot more legroom in this vehicle, and you do have a fully functioning sliding window, although it does seem to be back to front, so that would be a bit of a pain in reaching round and opening that and sliding it forward. The rubber checker plate floor back here is a nice thing to have, and you do have storage on the back of each one of the seats so that each passenger has a place to put their iPad, their phone, and maybe some sweets. The two outer seats, again, have Isofix, and these are a lot more easily accessible than the Transit. The middle seat, again, is missing Isofix, but you do have facility to put two Isofix seats, and God help you if you've got three of them still in seat. The twin slider utility of this vehicle would make it much easier for loading and unloading, and certainly, referring back to the Isofix, much easier to put those seats in. As you can imagine, coming through the vehicle like you would have to in the transit to fit a seat would be a bit of an issue. The seats are much more comfortable. There's much more of a lean angle on them and they seem to hug you a lot better than the transit and the transporter. You do have a 12 volt power supply, which is just underneath this right seat where I'm sat in here. However, there's not one symmetrically on the left seat. So you might have a bit of a battle for who wants to get this seat. The storage in the back here is pretty abundant. You've got a similar rail system to what is in the transit. That doesn't go as far back. However, each seat can lift up very similar to the front seat of the transporter, slides forward and you can lift it up that way. And you have a massive storage cubby hole just here. Again, in this one, you met with a bulkhead, which is nice and molded with the seats. I'm not entirely sure of the removal of this one, but it does seem to fit the seats pretty perfect. So it might be more of an issue to remove this bulkhead as it would be in a transporter or a transit. It is however a very nice bulkhead and you've got a big window to the rear. Door on this one again is very easy to slide, although it can be sometimes a bit of a pain to get it unlatched from the mechanism once it's locked in in the fully open position. So now we're in the back of the transporter. These seats are the softest out of all three vehicles, but they are nowhere near as comfy as the Renault Traffic. The lack of a bulkhead in here is gonna mean this vehicle is gonna be a lot louder to drive on the road. You can tell that this is a more van derived with six seats in it, rather than making a six seater vehicle out of a van chassis. There are still only two Isofix in this vehicle, and they are in the two seats here, so the middle and the right seat. They are probably the second least accessible out of the vans we've viewed today, but they are an easily enough accessible option. And I think I prefer this certainly over the transit, but the traffic wins the Isofix race. One thing this van can benefit from is that this passenger seat can slide fully forward so you can step into the back from the side. And also this one will slide fully flat should you want to make some form of bed substitute in the back. Second to that, these seats will fully remove. So you can just have a van in the back 
or a van with windows. You've still got your anchoring points that you would expect with a normal van and with the combi van you're going to get this rubber matting all the way through. There is again lack of 12 volt support back here so if you are having kids in the back that do need an iPad you're going to want to run some cables from the front. So this van has had some aftermarket upgrades such as carpet wrapping on the side and carpet wrapping on the top here. If you're buying this van in standard format you could expect to see some pretty bland van like board here and if you wanted to wrap it yourself, it wouldn't be too much. And if you wanted to pay someone to wrap it, it wouldn't be too much either. And that is one of the biggest benefits for a transporter is that the aftermarket and modifying scene is massive. So if there's something in here that you don't want or don't like, it's probably going to be available on the aftermarket scene for you to change or replace. The unfortunately tragic sliding window on this vehicle is prone to leaking and it is very awkward to open. You've got to kind of pull it towards you and slide it back. It's got locking pins in various little sections here, but for the most part, it's not a very nice window to operate. But at least it opens in full, unlike the Transit that opens ajar. So in the back of the van, as you would expect, it has been ply lined. Someone has put some flooring down on here. There's lots and lots of space in this Transit. The bulkhead obviously stops you from passing things through to the front. Like I said earlier in the video, it can be removed. You've got plenty of tie down points should you want to tie things down. You could possibly fit an off-road motorbike in here if you put the nose in one of the corners and shifted it round, but you would definitely fit them in if you were to remove the front wheel. You do have two lights in the top here, so if you were working in the back of here at night, you would still be able to see. These are nice bright white lights, not your usual crappy yellow ones. But for the most part, with all of these vans, these are very, very easily modified to fit your needs. Some people put false bases in the bottom so you can slide stuff out. Some people mount racking on the walls. It is a very, very usable space. And you should definitely look into what extras you can get for your vehicle in particular, should you buy one of these. And now we are back in the traffic. On the inside of these doors, you do have access handles so you can easily open them from the inside, whereas the Transit has emergency release handles. And although they do operate the same, it's not as nice as having a normal handle on the door. The interior of this one has been ply lined again, and it seems to have some rubberized coating on. I think it is a very nice finish. And also the back of this, even though you have the bulkhead, when you look down into this corner here, you can see that part of the seat does not have that under seat storage. So you can slide long things through there. And should you really need to, you could probably cut that little section out and slide right through to the front. Again, there is storage anger points here, although they do not seem as substantial as what you'd expect to find in the Transit or the Transporter but they are still here nonetheless. You do also benefit from having an interior deadlock system, as we all know that these vans are probably more prone from getting stolen from than most. So this interior deadlock system means that you can lock this, lock this from the inside and not have to worry about this door being open. Now finally, we are in the transporter and this place where I'm sat here is all too familiar. I've got one of these and I've spent many of hours in the back turning it into a camper van. This has the most substantial anchor points of all and I think that is because, like we said earlier, it is derived from a van more than the others are. So it's keeping that van heritage and you've got these lovely, lovely anchor points. You do have this rubber floor that has got a sponge underneath so it's quite comfortable to sit on as opposed to the hard floors in the other vans. This rubber floor in a combi wagon comes as standard. Although the lack of that bulkhead is going to make the noise inside a little more difficult, you do have that ability to pass stuff through right underneath the seats and right into the front cab. The rear door mechanism does differ slightly on this one from the other two. This one is what we call a tailgate and the other two are called barn doors. The tailgate gives you a nice place that you can be under the shade from or away from the rain during those rainy days. This one is electrically operated by a button should you want to open it from the inside, but it's not electrically operated as in it opens itself, that button just unclips the latch. The lighting in here is very, very dingy and if you were planning on working in here at nights you might want to consider getting some upgraded bulbs. So what can you expect from the drive of these vehicles? Now this one I'm in at the moment is the Transit. I've driven lots of these vehicles in my time and this one is probably one of the better spec ones. Things we can expect from the interior on this one is we have a heated windscreen, of course we've got our leather multifunction steering wheel, we have Bluetooth, cruise control, there's not much that you'll be missing from this vehicle opposed to getting a normal car. It's a very smooth drive and the steering is very light. You can expect to get around 40 miles per gallon from this vehicle. This one's got a six speed box and will cruise quite well on the motorways. The sound in here is pretty quiet. In comparison to my transporter, which I have also tried to make as quiet as I possibly can, 
this thing is still more quiet. A big part of that is that I have super paper thin, low profile tires on my transporter. And if you are about that scene, you'll probably end up putting similar wheels on this. But it is very nice to have that bulkhead in the back that it's just cutting out a lot of that ambient noise. Because in essence, that space in the back is just working as a speaker. So if you don't have that bulkhead, which I don't, and which the other transporter that we're about to drive doesn't, it's gonna be much louder. And the experience might not be getting picked up very well on this microphone, but bulkheads make a massive difference in this application. Although this is obviously a big vehicle, you don't feel too imposing driving these. If you're used to driving a van, then you know that you get used to it pretty quickly. If this is a jump for you and you're moving from a larger car to a larger van such as this, and you might be thinking, it is so much more bigger, I'm gonna struggle, it's probably not gonna be that much of an issue for you. One thing I will say is in a lot of these van variants, you are gonna get short wheelbase and long wheelbase versions. If you get the long wheelbase options, then of course they're longer. But what I found when I was driving transporters and looking for my transporter is that the short wheelbase version was just that little bit better for parking in normal parking bays. I think the majority of people that buy this vehicle will be using it as a daily vehicle to move the family around as well as going on adventures at the weekend. So it's nice to have that ability to park it in a normal parking bay at the shopping centre. The long wheel bases, although they're not that much different in comparison, that extra 20 or 30 centimetres does make that difference when you're parking it in some of the smaller parking bays. The media system in this is typical Ford fashion, blue screen, boring interface and pretty difficult to get used to. But that being said, it does offer everything you need. You can connect your phone to it, you can have hands free and you can operate it all from the steering wheel. And that is where Ford, I think, are lacking. This media system has not been updated in years. It is pretty, pretty crap, in my opinion. And I'm sure there's people watching this that have had experience with Ford systems and they love them. And maybe you hate VW systems. And I guess that is a case by case basis. And generally, it's whatever you use first. It's the old Mac and Windows argument. But I've just never got on with this Ford media interface. But overall to drive, it's a very, very smooth vehicle. You don't feel like you're driving a van or a car derived van. You feel like you're just driving a car. This one in particular has got a 2.2 litre engine, which is pushing a whopping 123 brake horsepower and 248 foot pounds of torque. So it's not gonna be the fastest vehicle in the range, but the torque means that you're gonna be able to lug a lot of luggage around and potentially even tow if you were deciding to tow a caravan on holiday. So now we are back in the traffic. In this one, we have a 1.6 litre engine, which gives us 125 horsepower and 236 foot-pounds of torque. Now, although that is a very, very small engine for a vehicle of this size, it seems to deliver on the torque numbers, which is exactly what you want from a vehicle just like this. Now, the driving experience in this is different to the others. You do have that leather steering wheel, but the multifunction aspect is very bare. You do have a lovely color screen in the middle, which has a reversing camera and navigation built in. Again, we have a six speed box. So on the motorway, this should lap it up. The engine noise of this vehicle is slightly louder than the Transit. Now, once I start getting up to speed, I am noticing that this vehicle gives a lot more of a van noise out of it. Whether that be from the slightly rough suspension or from the engine that's got that deep, diesel grunt that you would expect to find in an old Royal Mail wagon. That being said, it's not a horrible drive. It's, a, it's still a nice drive. The gearbox is smooth, the steering is very light, and you are gonna to expect to get a 46 mile per gallon average from this. And as far as van derived vehicles is concerned, that is a very, very good number. Now, I think one thing to consider with these vehicles is that if you are getting one, and you're expecting speed, you're probably gonna be in for a bit of disappointment. But if you are gonna sacrifice having that speed, you're probably gonna have economy quite high on your priority. And out of the three vehicles, this one, on paper at least, is the most economic. Part of my rant of this is that they've fitted a rear view mirror and there's no back window. But I've just noticed now, I've gone to go in reverse and the rear view camera comes up in the rear view mirror which is a very nice thing to have. It doesn't take away from the display, so if you've got something on the main display, then that will stay there. So if you're navigating, it will stay up, but it'll come up in that rear view mirror that is otherwise redundant. 
That is a very nice extra to have, and I wish I had something like that in my van. We do have a very nice digital readout of our speed in the middle here, but I do think that that thing is gonna become very dated very quickly. Even though this is the smallest engine of the three, it's by no means a slug, it still pulls you, it still gets you to where you need to go, and if I didn't tell you that it had a 1.6 engine, you probably wouldn't believe me. It's very well balanced and very well defined something that you probably wouldn't normally expect in a van. There are the odd rattle coming from the back here, and I'm not sure whether that's something that you could fix, or that is just part of the bulkhead. I'm sure with enough effort and enough hunting, you will find the rattle and fix it, but that's something to consider if little things like that do annoy you like they do me. So now we're in the transporter, and out of the three, I do prefer the steering wheel grab of this. However, they're just, they're just not those multifunction buttons on this steering wheel. And that is something that I would really miss if my van didn't have them. The media system in this is very dated. It's something you'd expect to see from a 2001 Polo and there is no heated front screen. This vehicle has got a typical two litre TDI engine that's pushing 137 brake horsepower and 251 foot pounds of torque. Although these engines do on the face of things seem to be plagued with problems that you might expect to find, for the most part, they are very reliable and economical engines. If you do have an issue with these, you're probably mostly gonna be very, very unlucky. I had an issue in mind, so it would be very easy for me to be bitter towards this engine, but I do understand that not a lot of people do, and it was quite a rare event that I did have an issue in mind in such a short period of time. Out of the three, this one is the most optional extra bear, and believe it or not, out of the three, this one's the most expensive. The drive is very nice though, it's very smooth, the clutch is very light and very car-esque. Like the other two, this is a six-speed manual, and with that torque number, you'll have no trouble towing anything you decide to tow with this. As expected, this one is the loudest from the inside. Without that bulkhead, there's a lot of ambient noise traveling through here, and there's that deep ambient grunt that really gets your ears going, and on the motorway, it is unbearable coming from a man that did have his transporter without a bulkhead, without any sound deadening for quite a long period of time. With all these vans, if the noise is too much for you, you can always fit your own aftermarket sound deadening, which is exactly what I've done to mine, and it made it that little bit smoother on the road and made it that little bit more car-like-esque. One thing you might want to consider when you are looking for a vehicle like these ones that I've looked at today is that if you do decide to opt for the transporter or even the transit custom, because this is plagued with a very similar problem, is that the modifying scene is quite large. So that means you'll probably struggle to find a van that is standard. And by standard, I mean people often stick bits of chrome on. This one's got a big stupid sun visor cutting off half the windscreen. And it is quite popular to put crappy modifications onto transporters. Often when things are modified in a transporter world, they're not modified to probably what you would expect the standard of modification to be. I've seen some terrible horror stories over the years with transporter vans, and I've purposely gone out of my way to make sure that mine, when I was modifying mine, was up to the highest standard. But it's something to be aware of when you're looking at them. Don't just get besotted on the fact that the one that you're looking at is lowered with nice wheels because it might be hiding some gremlins because the person that lowered it was inexperienced and it might have well been the first time that he's ever done any work on a vehicle. Now there's not all that much else to talk about with this transporter. All in all, compared to the other two, the interior and the drive is pretty bland and pretty boring. But we'll get back to Hamworthy Car Centre and we'll have a final debrief on which vehicle I prefer. So which one of these vehicles is best? That question is not as easy to answer as I might have thought before making this video. Everyone probably watching this now would have said that I would have said the Transporter is the best vehicle out of three, but it is categorically not. For me, the Traffic is the best vehicle, followed by a close second with the Transit and then a third with the Transporter. The Transporter, however, has this cult following and this, this meaning to invest. And for sure, in five years' time, out of the three of these, the Transporter is going to sell for more money. But the best value is this Traffic in the middle. And the one that sits directly in the middle as value per performance is this transit. I hope you've enjoyed the video and if you have then please do subscribe down below. If you have any questions with regards to any of these vehicles or any of the ones that you've seen on the forecourt today then please do ask down below and if I can't answer I'm sure Hamworthy Car Centre will be able to. I'll catch you in the next video.